go up just a tiny bit more and let it bronze since we already. What are we doing? I'm gonna ask you a couple oh, questions about oh. me. Oh. <laughs> Andrea Holmes. Uh, I'm a professor of chemistry at the university, and I'm also the director of the cannabis studies here. I am Erin Sutliff. I am the laboratory director at Cannabis Testing Laboratories. What are some of the challenges you face in our state? Well, uh, interestingly enough, our state is a lot more progressive than what you might think. <laughs> there are a lot of conservative people here, but there's also a lot of people who really embrace this new industry, who are interested in this industry. Those are females. And those are female. Those are males. Yep. You ready? At your leisure. Hi, my name's Alan Jenkins. I'm a retired economics professor. I'm standing today surrounded by naturally occurring hemp. It's the end of August. I'm in South Central Nebraska. Hemp and human go back thousands of years. Hemp plants were one of the foundational crops for early civilizations. Hi, I'm Alex Swartz. I'm Tom Swartz. We're uh, on our family farm here right now. Uh, traditionally, we've grown uh, crops similar to what others in our area grow. Uh, this greenhouse was just transitioned this year into industrial hemp production. It seems like as time has gone on, more people are more excited about what we're doing, and they're excited that we're growing these things. These, these naturally occurring plants we don't really know much about the chemistry of those because no one's ever looked very hard at these. In the 1920s and 30s, they started writing laws in terms of cannabis, and they made no distinction between hemp and marijuana. Heroin. That's why we have the problems today, is because of miseducation. This belief that somehow cannabis is bad for us or cannabis uh, create societal problems, really you know, been baked into the mindset of Americans for a long, long time. What do you see your role as the future as we, we dig inside this plant? It's about education. That's where the science needs to come in now is educating and getting rid of that stigma. I think that's the biggest hurdle that we have. So in short, you're undoing, just say no. Yeah. <laughs> More cannabis. Yeah. Right. Right. Now that hemp is legal in the United States, we have a great opportunity to really spearhead a new industry that this is something that people in our community are using. In 10 years, we could be growing for something that we haven't even imagined right now. Everything that you're getting from hemp, usually the cannabinoids are you know, helping with anxiety and different things like that. We want to bring every little cannabinoid that we can get from the plant into our machine so we can get into our oils. Because of the experiences people are actually having with this plant, it's getting harder and harder to make the argument that, that this plant is bad for people. What it can do to our economy, what it can do um, for sustainability, uh, for uh, environmental cleanup, for medicine, health and wellness. You know, today we live in this um, artificial pharma engineered world, maybe we should consider a different approach, which is a, a plant-based approach. Giving people a low-cost alternative to a prescription is uh, what this is all about. There are always some people who don't like what you're doing, <laughs> but we're still doing it because we believe in it and because it's the right thing to do.